I have only touched on one form of riba so far, borrowing and lending on interest. And if we had the time, how much more time for for Adan? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Well, let's use these seven minutes to show you how do you deal with riba. And then after the Isha Salat, I mean Isha Azan, we can then take the second part. The Quran gives us a methodology in three parts for dealing with riba, extricating yourself from riba. The first part of that methodology in the Quran is public education, which we've just done for you. Public education. Teach the people, explain the people. You cannot go to part two until you have control over territory in Allah. Nowhere on the face of the earth today do you have control over territory in Allah's name. Nowhere. Nowhere on the face of the earth today do you have control over territory in Allah's name. Why? Because every single square inch of the earth today is organized as secular states, which are members of the United Nations Organization, which has a charter. And the charter creates the Security Council. And the Security Council is vested with authority, supreme authority in the world. Supreme authority in all matters pertaining to international peace and security. And so if the Security Council says stand up, you've got to stand up. And if the Security Council says sit down, you've got to sit down. So you can't say that you are, <laughs> you recognize a lot of suffering. Come on man, that's a joke. But when you have control over territory in Allah's name, then you can enforce Allah's law. So you'll move to stage two at that time, and in stage two you will prohibit all transactions of money lending on interest. Illegal. So if a money lender lends money, <coughs> and the borrower refused to pay the interest, the money lender cannot take him to part. No, there's no way you can cut back the money, the interest. But in stage two, you will only, you will only make illegal future transactions. All previous transactions will still remain valid. Huh? In other words, I'm going to use a long word now. There is no retroactive enforcement of the legislation. This is what happened in Medina. Why, why do you in stage two adopt this strategy? Answer, you want to turn public opinion in your favor. You want to demonize the money lender. You want to marginalize it. Why do you think banks like to give computers <laughs> to orphanages? <laughs> banks are giving computers to orphanages because banks want to get public opinion on their side. So in this stage, stage two, you're now going to permit the money lender to continue to collect his interest. You can even go to the court. But no new money lending on interest is permitted. And so now, when the money lender goes to seek his interest on the, on the loan, he has some shame now. And society is going to be asking questions. How come Allah has prohibited it? And you're still collecting your interest. You see? So the money lender is put on the defensive. That is this until you reach stage three. And in stage three, Nabi Muhammad did not move to stage three until Khutbatul Wida. Khutbatul Wida. The farewell pilgrimage. And only after Khutbatul Wida did Allah send down revelation. 
supporting stage 3. In stage 3, you now have retroactive enforcement, meaning whether it be new loans or old loans, they're all prohibited. And if you do not give it up, we're going to take up the sword against you. We wage war on you. And then Nabi Muhammad made the announcement that the first one is the money owed to my uncle. What was his name? Still have a few minutes left, you know. <laughs> Abbas. And so now the state is obliged to wage war against the money lender. And then came revelation. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqallaha wa dharu ma baqiya min arriba ikuddu mu'minin. Fa illam tafa'alu. If you do not give up riba at this third stage, fa adhanu biharbi min Allahi wa rasul. We're going to wage war. The armed forces are going to take action against you in order to get it. Eradication of riba. So these are the three stages given in the Quran. You cannot employ these three stages until you take control over territory in Allah's name. But Allah is sovereign over that territory, not the United Nations. Not the Security Council, but Allah. The trader in Mecca who lent money on interest did so in order to increase his wealth. But the child doesn't lend money and interest merely to increase his wealth. No. He has another, even more sinister objective. I come from the Caribbean island of Trinidad, otherwise known as Brian Lara country. For those who play cricket. And next door to me is Venezuela, you know Hugo Chavez. Next door to me is Colombia. Next door to me is Brazil. Hmm? And Argentina, South America. And Central America, Nicaragua, Costa Rica. And in Central and South America, there were large numbers of Indian, Indian tribes. Hmm? American Indian tribes. They never knew they, they were Indian tribes. They knew they were, they were Cherokee and they were this name of Kat Arawak and Karen and so on. But suddenly they learned that they were Indian. <laughs> and then came Europe. Europe. Which came to colonize them. Brutally. With a brutality unprecedented in human history. There was no slavery in history to match the slavery of modern Europe. Huh? But sometimes it became unpalatable to enslave a people to normal slavery. So the European had to find a way to enslave them and yet not call them slaves. <laughs> so what the European plantation owners plantation owners did was to lend money to the American Indians but lend them knowing that they cannot repay and when they could not repay then you force them to walk on the plantation to repay and when they die then their children have to continue to work in the plantation. This was called the, the Spanish word the latifundia economy. So that the money lender sometimes lends you money not merely to increase his wealth. He lends you an interest in order to enslave you. Have they been doing that in the world at large? Have you ever heard of a man named John Perkins? Have you ever heard of that remark?